a couple of years ago, the, the penny finally dropped. So I, I can combine two things I love, riding my bike and taking photographs. And the bike is just such an amazing tool for getting around cities. I'm constantly traveling around the world and, and on the bike I can get two, three, four, maybe five times as many shots. That mobility is just amazing. It's a total photographic game changer. So it's like three minutes past six. Uh, been up for about an hour already. Uh, last night we were looking at um, sunrise and sunset and stuff like that. So uh, sunrise today is 7.23 in London. Um, we've already kind of looked where we're going to do our first shoot. Um, on Waterloo Bridge, it's going to be nice, easily facing, so the light should pop up behind the city. So this is kind of normal. In fact, actually, it's kind of late. So uh, that's one good thing about the winter is that actually the sun gets up a bit later. Uh, sometimes I might be getting up at like three in the morning to try and get that sunrise shot. I'm like I'm a massive person in terms of preparation, so I try and get all my prep done the night before. So anything like location like looking at the weather, making my kits all good, but like just getting up early, I always want to test my kit again, make sure do that, take a couple of shots of the kit, make sure the memory cards are right, it's formatted the batteries, double check everything, especially if it's a super critical shoot um, before, I, before I even leave the house. And coffee, need coffee. Got a 7200F4 today. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this. I normally wouldn't carry this, but today I'm hopefully going to get some nice long shots of the buildings and maybe some animals as well, the deer in the park would be pretty nice. It is snowing today. It's the coldest night in London, minus six. It is pretty fresh. Uh, so that could look pretty nice, actually, the deer with the snow. Got uh, two extra batteries cold today. It could be an issue. I've got a fresh battery in there, but it might not last as long because it's going to be on my back and exposed to the cold. So I've got a couple of extra batteries. Memory cards, extra memory cards. I've got two in there. Uh, I don't use the duplication function, so I've always got two fresh cards in there. The chance of me running out is really slim, 128 gigabyte cards. Carbon tripod, which fits in perfect. And like, if I was going out, I'm not going to use it today because I'm in central London, but I can put a drone in there and my controller. I run a really simple like setup. Um, one camera, the strap, which basically allows me to ride with the camera on my back, so I can literally shoot while I'm cycling along. 24-70, 2.8G Master lens, and this A7R Mark IV has got a crazy pixel count, which has totally changed the way I shoot and what I carry. 61 megapixels, which has meant that I've like taken a lens out of my lens kit, and with this 24-70, it's got so much more reach because of the crop. I can crop in a huge amount and still have a really, really crisp, clean, workable image. Yeah, so we got up super early just because like the light at this time of the morning is really nice. It's just kind of starting to pop out. Uh, and that's why this camera is like so good in terms of dynamic range. And dynamic range is basically the ability to pop out detail from like the whites to the blacks or the highlights and the shadows. Like so today we've got some really nice light coming from the sky and this coming from the buildings as well, the reflections and on the water. So I know that's gonna be really nice. So I wanna keep that detail. And then also we've got some nice shadows and nice blacks. We've got the smoke coming up as well. So like, this is like the perfect example of dynamic range but to get all the dynamic range that is where you absolutely need to use your histogram so i'm going to play around with my manual settings so to try and get that histogram in the middle and then on top of that i then use the zebra function as well to make sure i'm not overexposing parts um, to get the full dynamic range out of this camera you basically need to have the histogram in the middle because then that way you're getting the fullest range from the highlights the whites to the blacks to the shadows and this is just going to be like killer. So I'm going to take several shots with a different amounts of zoom and that's why this lens is so amazingly versatile. And then also I'm going to start playing around with shutter speed 
an aperture as well to see where I can get out of this. And I'm still shooting at ISO 200 uh, and I'm getting a huge amount of detail out of these photographs. I mean, it's just going to be so beautiful and because it's so cold, it's like, I think it's still minus three. It's not, it's not, it's not warm. So we've got a light. It's cold. So like, with the light coming up and all the reflection of the building, uh, I do need some video. So that's where like having the function and then putting the picture profile on the function is really handy. So I'm going to select picture profile seven and then set it up. I'm shooting manually as well. And when you click record, obviously it crops in just 16 by nine. And that's going to be pretty killer. I love my cycling photography and outdoor photography, but like the South Bank and the Barbican, you have this really kind of brutalist architecture, uh, which like five years ago, I used to hate. I was like, why do people like this? And then it's so, it just like, something happened and I just find it so amazingly beautiful and this is like another example of like where you want to position uh, the light in the middle on the on your um, histogram but actually like you don't have to put it in the middle all the time like with this I know that actually I, I want the blacks on this I've got this like really nice popping yellow to like Sometimes just embrace the darkness, go, yeah, I'm going to prioritize the shadows and move the histogram to the left. Or you're going to prioritize the highlights, you want the whites, make those yellows pop out and move it more to the right. So I'm here in Leak Street, which is like a, a world famous street art street. Uh, really nice mural of Sir Captain Tom Moore, Sir Tom Moore now. And like it's quite dark in here, but this Sony A7R can handle crazy amounts of ISO. So I'm going to bump up the ISO. I've got it set at a thousand, but I could literally go into the thousands. Uh, definitely can handle a bit more noise because of the texture in front of me. And in terms of focus modes, yeah, using single shot focus mode, and then I'm also then controlling the focus area using the flexible spot. Just using all these shortcut keys, which I've got pre-programmed, it's so, so helpful. And like, you get really good workflow. And that's just gonna be a real peach. And it's even, it's even doing the eye recognition as well, which is pretty cool. So it's finding his eye through a set of glasses on a wall on street art, like that. Nice on uh, I'm in Richmond Park, which is a, a mecca for cyclists, but there's also uh, some pretty nice deer over there as well, so I'm going to change over my lens to the 7200 and change a few settings on my camera as well. So, change over the lens first, try and do this nice and quickly so we don't get too much dust in. Got some pretty cool settings on here, so I'll put it to subject detection. I'll change that from human to animal. So it's got a uh, face eye detection, it's going to pick up their eyes and focus on it for me. And then also what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the uh, shutter on or off because it's mirrorless. So I'm going to turn it on, it's nice and quiet. So I guess this is kind of my bread and butter if you want to call it that. Uh, mainly specialising in cycling photography. And interestingly, all the photographs you may have seen of mine, I sell shoot. And to do that, I use the time lapse function on this camera. So I use the camera in quite an unusual way, I guess, in that way, in that I'm sure there's not too many people using the time lapse function for what are basically high quality selfies. Let's do that. So I'm a tripod and got lucky really in that the sun has just come out for me. It's in completely the right direction, so it's gonna illuminate me, which is gonna help me with like shutter speeds and all that sort of stuff. First off my frame, so I wanna give myself a bit of space 
that side of the road, but in essence, I'm kind of looking for the photograph to clip the edge of the road there. Get some of there, get some of this shadows, some of the snow there, go through the skyline over London. Um, so that's kind of my shot. In terms of where I guess I want to position myself, I don't want to be completely center shot or like completely in the frame, I want to be slightly off. Let the landscape do the talking. So I'm going to level it using the inbuilt leveler. And then I'm then going to start playing around. So the reason why I ride it slowly is for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I want to give myself the best possible chance of it focusing on me properly. Um, with the time lapse function, you can't use continuous autofocus. Even though I may have thought that actually the best place is actually to have a rider a bit further down, it might look better with me further up. So the reason I ride slowly as well, that it gives me great flexibility of shot and that I'm actually going to have about 20 shots of me in different places, which is just great. You've got more flexibility. I've managed to combine two passions, which just like drives me more and being on the bike, I can just go to so many more places. So I'd summarize, ride more, shoot more, and definitely experiment. Just play with your camera. <laughs>